What else can we do with them? Well, we can compute their length, right? I mean, again, the formula for length, remember, was basically generalization of the dot product. And uh, so we can say that the length of a, a Euclidean vector is going to be by, be given by the square root of the sum of the squares of its components. It's the same thing as basically uh, taking the square root of v dot product with itself. But wait a minute. These are not geometric vectors. These are things which happen, which occur, which exist algebraically. We can try and imagine some kind of four-dimensional space in which we can draw these things and so on, but this is not really a length. So in order to um, bring this issue up to our attention later on, just remember that we're dealing with algebraic objects, we're going to change um, the name. We're not going to talk about the length of a Euclidean vector, but we're going to talk instead about the magnitude or the norm. No, not that norm, not the norm of Cheers. Okay, So it's just the norm of lowercase n. All right? So. Uh, once we have the length, of course, we can construct unit vectors. Because, oh, sorry, not the length, but the magnitude or the norm. We can construct unit vectors by using exactly the same formula we used for geometric vectors. Namely, if I have a vector v, all I have to do is divide it by its uh, norm. So take v and multiply or divide it by the norm of v, or if you want, multiply by 1 over the norm of v. Okay? And if we have unit vectors, then we have directions. We can consider the concept of direction, even though, again, we're not dealing with geometric vectors. But the, the direction, again, is given by the unit vector of that particular vector. But we can do even more, which is very similar to what we've done with uh, geometric vectors. Well, we can define, for instance, the angle between two vectors. Okay. Well, remember, how did we define uh, the angle between two geometric vectors? Well, we defined it geometrically, but then we found out that we could retrace, compute that angle by using only dot products and lengths, right? In fact, the formula that we used was the fact that cosine theta is equal to v dot w divided by the length of v times the length of w. All right, for general Euclidean vectors, we may not have a length, we have a magnitude, but we can still use the same formula. We can compute the right-hand side. And, and this is an important point to consider, it can be shown that, in fact, the right-hand side, because of properties of dot products and the norm and so on, is always going to be between negative 1 and 1, which means that the right-hand side is always in the domain of the cosine of theta, and therefore we can define theta as the inverse cosine of that beautiful formula. So we can define the angle between two vectors, even though we're talking about vectors which don't have a geometry. There is no real angle, but we can still talk about angles, and it will be a useful concept. In particular, we can uh, define the concept of two vectors being orthogonal, even if they're not geometric vectors. Remember, orthogonal means the same as perpendicular. And when are two vectors, when are we going to say that two vectors are orthogonal? Well, if the cosine of the angle they form is zero, that's the usual thing, but we're going to actually rely on the linear algebra <coughs> property that two vectors are orthogonal if and only if their dot product is zero. So all of this stuff goes through very smoothly. No changes required, just longer, but no changes required. What else can we do with them? Well, once we have angles and dot products and, uh, and lengths and so on, we can actually project one vector onto another. Uh, how do we do that? So let's say I want to project the vector v onto w. All I have to use, do is use that formula. Notice this is exactly the same formula we have used for the geometric projection projection. The only difference is that these are not geometric vectors, but the formula still works. So we're still going to define the projection by using that particular formula. What else can we do? We can explore the geometric, and I'm putting that in quote, because really this, this not being geometric vectors, we can't really talk about geometric properties, but there is a whole bunch of properties that come uh, from geometry for geometric vectors that can be easily extended to Euclidean vectors. And we're going to look at some of those in, uh, uh, in the class. But there are many, many, many of these uh, geometric properties that we can use. We're going to finish with a couple of bits of notation that are very common, very popular, and therefore uh, I expect you to know them and to use them and to understand them when you see them. 
So the set of all Euclidean vectors dimension n is denoted in that way. It's denoted, it's denoted by a cap fancy actually r, but it's okay if you just use a capital R, with an exponent of n on top. What does that mean? R stands for real, real numbers. So what we're doing is we're taking the uh, set of um, the set of all sets of n real numbers. Okay, so that looks a little bit complicated, but the notation is a lot easier. Okay, so remember, R means that we're dealing with real numbers as components, and how many components? We're using n components. So, for instance, this uh, particular vector is a vector in R four. Okay, why? Because it has four components. It's an n-dimensional uh, vector. It's a, a vector dimension four. Therefore, it is in R four. Similarly, this vector is in, see if you can guess it, yes, of course, R5, because it has five components. And this one, duh, all you have to do is be able to count how many components there are, right? And therefore, this one is in R3, right? So R3 is also uh, a common notation for space, the three-dimensional space. So uh, you're starting to see the connections here. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a bit of a fancy and common notation that we're going to use. Okay. Uh, now, in R8, well, this is another little bit of notation. But let's say we're in R8. This is just an example. Okay. In R8, we're going to denote some special unit vectors like this one, E5. E5 is going to be the unit vector that has a 1 in the fifth position. You may want to count it and zero elsewhere. Of course, the length or the magnitude, I should say, right? The magnitude of this vector is one. So it is a standard unit vector. And it is the one in R8 in position five. Now, again, uh, we're being a little bit sloppy here with the notation, but we're trying not to make it too heavy. Um, start getting used to it. Uh, don't get too, uh, too frustrated if you get confused with it. Um, if all else fails, just ask for clarification. But this is another notation that I'm going to be using in what comes up next.